and welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a snow material in V-Ray for Rhino. I'm going to be using this simple scene here which depicts a tree within this small room at the back of the scene and we're going to be creating a snow texture for this landscape outside our scene here. Now we're going to start with a very simple basic snow texture and then we're going to move into a more advanced looking snow texture as well to give you a couple of different options for this. The two things to note of when you're creating snow are the colour and the look of the snow and also the sort of texture of that material, the kind of roughness and the bumpiness of that snow. Now a good place to kind of look for initial textures for this is textures.com. They have a series of snow textures you can use for this purpose. Now for this first one we're going to be using this sort of fresh snow texture and if you click in here you can download these for free they're sort of smaller maps and the only one of these maps we actually need is this height map which will control the kind of textured surface of our snow so I'm going to download this here and we're going to then create a material with this height map in place so what we'll do is we'll open up our V-Ray asset editor to create our material we're going to go down to the bottom left on create asset create a new material here and we're going to create a generic material for this first snow I'm going to call this just a basic snow texture. All we're going to do is we're going to make the colour of this material white and then we're going to click at the top here to add attribute. We're going to add in a displacement map and this is going to give us our kind of textured surface to our snow. Under the displacement here we're going to turn that on and then opening up those settings in the mode and map parameter we're going to click on the texture slot go to bitmap and we're going to drop in that fresh snow texture we've downloaded there and what the height map essentially does is you can see it's giving us a preview of this black and white map here and wherever the texture is black it's going to push the texture geometry down wherever it's white it will pull the geometry up thus creating the kind of rough textured surface that we want on our geometry now if you're using V-Ray 5 in Rhino you won't see a preview of this occurring but it will happen when you apply the geometry to the plane you're wanting to use it on. So I'm going to just select my plane that I want to apply this texture to, right click on my basic snow and click apply to selection to apply it there. Then what we can do is we can go back to our window view and we can test it using the interactive renderer. Now I've just got simple sunlight set up in my scene and as you'll see when we load this up there isn't really much happening on the surface there we can't really see that texture and that's the reason for that is this amount value here now the amount controls the amount that that texture will be displaced and will be moved by and this amount depends on the units you're using in your scene so if you're using millimeters like mine set up to this is currently set to one millimeter which is why i can't really see any difference if I set this up to 100 millimeters, hit enter, you'll then start to see that we can see this surface being displaced and it's pushing up on the white areas of the map, pulling down on the black areas to create that nice sort of ripply snow effect as I'm seeing here. And that's the most basic version of the snow. We're just using a white material, using a displacement map to force that up and down. Obviously remember whenever you're using textures to make sure that your objects you're using are texture mapped to give them the right size on that texture there. In order to check that, we can just select the object, go to the properties under the texture map box and you can map it here. And at the moment my size is set to a two meter by two meter texture mapping there. Now, as I said, that's the sort of most basic snow texture we can do, but actually we can take this one step further and have a slightly more advanced texture of our snow. Now, you'll see in some of these previews here that the snow in the preview, especially in this footsteps one, is a sort of nice tone of blue. We're getting this really nice kind of crisp blue tone in that texture and that's often what you'll see when you see real snow the light that kind of refracts through the snow turns a slightly bluey color due to the ice in that material now if we wanted to replicate that in our v-ray material we have to use a different material type and this is found if we go back to our asset editor create asset under materials and we're going to create this subsurface scattering material 
Now what this material does is it allows us to create a material that has a kind of different colour or texture just under the surface of that material plus kind of recreating materials that have a kind of semi translucency but contain kind of other colours within them i.e. with our icy snow. So let's just rename this and we'll call this advance snow like so. And what we'll do is we're going to leave the colour as white because we still want our snow to be white. Under the diffuse layer we're going to ignore this because we're going to just set the diffuse amount to zero so we don't need to worry about that layer. And then in the subsurface layer we're going to set the subsurface colour, so the colour just below the surface of the material, to a very light blue. And I'm just going to kind of pick it just off the white area there so it's just a slightly blue tone there and you can kind of see it taking effect there. And then in the scatter colour we're going to change that to a white. So we're going to get this icy sort of blue texture. For the scatter radius, although it says centimetres here, this is actually controlled by the units the scene is using. So you can ignore that little centimetre icon and we're just going to put in 20 there. So we're actually working 20 millimetres and what that is saying is that the light will kind of scatter in a 20 millimetre range under the surface of my material. So that's the kind of translucency level I get. And you might want to play around with that value once you add it to the material to see how it's looking. For the specular layer, this is how kind of shiny the surface of that material is. And for snow, the higher that amount value, the more icy it will look because it will be more reflective on the surface. So I'm going to just set that to a 0.5 for now because we want it slightly shiny but not kind of super icy there. Now the last thing we want to do is add back in that displacement. And we can do that just on the add attribute again add displacement, turn it on and I'm going to just locate under bitmap again my fresh snow texture there as we did before and we're just going to set that to 100 again as well to give it that sort of displacement level so it's exactly the same as my previous one. Then all I'm going to do is let's just add the advanced snow now to this object and render it out. And as you can see here, the render's already going and we're getting now this nice sort of blue tone to our material. As you see, it will take slightly longer to render this material because we're doing this sort of subsurface calculations. It will have to bounce around slightly more in that material and then the kind of light calculations will take a little bit longer. So you'll find that it will take slightly longer to render there, but we will get a more accurate result and it will look more kind of realistic to an actual snow material. Now we can always adjust the displacement if we want that to be a little bit kind of bumpier there to give us a kind of bigger texture on that material and you see as I'm upping that amount we see it kind of rendering at a slightly more increased rate in the right hand side as well. So you can play around with that displacement until you get the kind of look that you're going for. I think for this material about 120 is probably okay. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to let's bring another sort of object into the scene so we can test this on two different surfaces. So I've got a sphere here which we're going to just move around to the front of the scene and let's have it sort of just slightly in the snow here right in front of that window and to that sphere let's add this advanced snow material or we'll apply it to selection again open up my window and let's do another render test on my view here to see that added on and there we can see we've got this sort of this ball now I want to lift it up slightly and here you can see that sort of blue tone really affecting this object and how that kind of works so that sort of bluey subsurface material we're getting here just gives us that really sort of accurate looking snow material to our object. Now obviously I'm just using the fresh snow texture at the moment to give us this kind of surface texture but we can play around with other displacement maps to give us different textures to our snow. So let's say for instance we wanted to keep the fresh snow on this ball but change the surface of this ground texture. I'm going to just open up my asset editor again going to right click on my advanced snow and I'm going to just duplicate this material. So we've got advanced snow and we'll call it 
number two here. And then in this, we're going to go back to my text.com website and I'm going to this time download this snow footsteps. So we're going to have sort of footsteps in the snow around my kind of ball, but we're going to keep the ball itself as a kind of softer material. So I'm just going to download this displacement map here again. And once we have that, we're going to go back to our material. Under displacement, we're going to click on the blue map, see where which map is already put in, and then we're going to click on the folder icon to open up and add in a new texture there. So I'm going to change it for that footsteps texture. And we're going to go back again. And then, just so I can see the material, we'll click on that plane, apply to selection, and have a look and see how that then renders out there. And you'll see that that's now updating with my new surface I've added in with these sort of footsteps surrounding the snow. And as with the kind of previous one, it will take a little bit of time to render out. But as you can see, as it slowly renders there, we're getting a nice kind of textured surface on the surface of my snow. So that is effectively how you create a snow texture in V-Ray for Rhino. And the last test we can do with this is we can have a go at changing the lighting here to see what it looks like under a more dramatic lighting effect if we kind of make it a nighttime scene and I'm going to add a light to the inside of this window to give us a kind of glow coming out and scattering light onto the surface of these objects. I've got a sphere light that's in the scene already and we're just going to kind of move it into place here, go back to my V-Ray asset editor and make sure this is turned on. So we have that turned on there. I'm also going to go to my sphere light tool and we'll make another light just on the outside of this scene here, kind of just casting a bit of sort of directional glow onto my object. And in my asset editor under this light, we'll make this a nice kind of blue tone. So we've got this sort of nice blue light on the outside of my scene. Then with those two lights in place, and if we go to our document sun, and we'll just put the sun below the horizon to make a nighttime scene there. And with those parameters in place, we can then select our view and we're going to do a test render to see what this now looks like. So we're going from a daytime scene to this kind of nice nighttime scene with this kind of interior glow, casting a nice shadow on my sort of snowy outside as well. And there you can see that's rendered out in a little bit higher quality there. So we can see that lighting effect and the glow we're getting on our kind of snowy material there. So that was a quick video tutorial on how to create a snow material in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you found this useful and if you want to watch any other videos on material creation or rendering and creating drawings in Rhino, then please do watch the videos on my channel.